But interestingly enough, life happens. And for those of us that are in the United States right now, life has definitely happened, especially for those of you who've been born for the last couple of weeks. We've had hurricanes. We've had deaths in Charlottesville. We've had life happen. And when life happens, it brings with us a huge array of emotions that we have to deal with, right? So if we understand how to not stuff our emotions, but how to process our emotions and how to move past, right, and let go of those emotions, we actually can help others and we have so many tools that can help in this process. So the first thing, this is such a basic concept, but I think so many of us overlook it. And it's basically this, you are created to function as a whole. So we have the spiritual side of you, we have your mind, and we have your body. And if any one of those things are out of balance, if you're taking care of your spirit but not taking care of your body, are you gonna have problems? Absolutely. If you're taking care of your mind but not taking care of your body and your spirit, you're also gonna have problems. Unless all three of these things are nourished, we don't have what we call total wellness, okay? And if any one of these things are missing, you will not feel well, and you will not feel emotionally well. So it gets a little bit more complicated than just dealing with ailments, physical ailments. Now we're dealing with spiritual, your mind, and your body to become truly emotionally well, all right? Now, this is the overarching, this is the overarching kind of idea. Now we're gonna take it down to a very, very small, down to a down to a cell level, okay? So your body is made up of very intelligent cells, and they're actually wired to restore health. Basically, what that means is the cells in your body know if they are to do one of two things. Number one, they're either to sorry, they're either to <coughs> restore itself. When they have damage to a cell, it either restores or what? or it dies. And they're wired to know what to do. Either I die, and the body makes me more new cells, or I restore itself. They're very intelligent, right? And we're gonna go over, I think this is more like missing one of the slides. Okay, we're gonna talk, I did say do with four of them. We're gonna talk about three things today. We're gonna talk about number one, the science behind emotion and essential oils, okay? How many of you wanna know scientifically why the oils work for emotions? And not just, I put balance on every day and I just feel good, right? Number two, tools and habits for healthy body chemistry. And three, practical emotional wellness steps that you can take right now. Practical things that you can do to become emotionally well. Okay, now we're gonna move fast here. So, we're here with our cells. Now this is, this is a picture. <laughs> It's supposed to be a picture of really healthy, happy cells, a big pile of them, right? <laughs> so, um, when when we talk about when we talk about healthy cells, right? Um, <clears throat> Emotions. 
information-carrying molecules. We call them peptides, okay? They're information-carrying molecules that, and what kind of information do they carry? Anyone? What information do these peptides carry? Anything, right? Fear, pain, anxiety, hurt, loneliness, being scared, any kind of information. I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm cold. They're information-carrying molecules that actually bind and they actually react right here with cell receptors. This is a cell of your body. This is the receptor site. And every cell in your body has receptor sites where they actually bind to peptides or information-carrying molecules. This is how you walk. Your brain sends messages to your body and it takes a step. It's those receptor sites that are telling your body what to do. It starts on a cellular level, right? So when these information molecules actually get in contact with the cell receptors, they actually get into cells and they impact cell function. So, how quickly does this happen? How fast does this, can this happen, you know? Imagine, imagine you're up on a hike and you're walking along and you just look down and you see a snake just about ready to attack you. How fast does information get sent to your body? Almost immediately. It can take longer, but it can be immediately. And what happens when all those receptor sites are now gathering information? What happens, number one, to your emotions? What are you going to start feeling? Fear, right? You're going to actually start feeling some fear. And then it actually starts affecting you physically. What happens to your heart? Your heart immediately starts racing. What happens to actually your sweat glands? They start kicking in, right? And you might even, within a second, just go, <gasps> right? Your body is now reacting, even if you don't tell it to react. You don't literally have to sit, physically sit there and say, do this, do this. It's, it's reacting without any, without any warning, okay? Now, what if you get a bad phone call? You're just having a good day, and all of a sudden you have a devastating phone call. What starts happening? Panic. Your heart starts to race. Sometimes you might even have to sit down, right? How, have you, any of you experienced when you just can't even breathe? You just go, <gasps> So your, can your emotions affect you physically? They do all the time. In fact, your body relies on your emotions to tell it what to do. In some instances, it's life or death, right? Emotions absolutely can affect your body. And not only do they affect your body, but they actually can affect ailments. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute, okay? Now, emotions are processed throughout your entire body. These receptor sites, these receptor sites are constantly working. And it's not just in your brain when you think, I'm going to think about something and my brain is going to tell my body what to do now. Most of the research that are out there, science reveals that they call it three brains. But there's actually three parts of your body that send the most neurotransmitters, right? That send the most, that send those most peptides, and we're gonna talk about them right now. They're the heart, they're the mind, and the gut. So three places in your body where you're actually sending those information molecules. The mind. Now, the mind is basically what we call the conductor, okay? It's the logic part. It's your intellect, intellect part. You know that your subconscious mind actually directs 90% of your behavior. Like right now, are you even thinking about breathing or blinking? If you look at me and go, okay, I haven't blinked, I haven't blinked for a while. I need to blink. You know what I mean? 90% of everything you do is actually directed by your subconscious mind. Your heart. This is really interesting. Do you know that there are actually more neural pathways going from your heart to the brain? then from the brain to the heart. What does that mean? <clears throat> what does that mean? There's more neural pathways going from your heart to the brain than from your brain to the heart. Your brain, or your heart controls more of what your body actually does in your reactions than your brain. There's more neural pathways. It's your heart that's making most of the calls. And, you know, when we, it's kind of like your discerner. We call your heart the discerner. You, you, you say all the time, it's just my intuition. I just feel this. I just, it doesn't feel right or it feels good, right? And as we discern, as the heart discerns, right, 
and it starts sending all these transmitters, all these neuropathways start going, and all these peptides start moving, we have, we have tons of control on our brain and our bodies through our heart, what our heart's processing. Okay, now, the next is the gut. Now this is interesting. Do you know that 90% of the body's serotonin, what is serotonin? Serotonin, what is this, does anyone know? <coughs> That's right. I mean, in a, in a really simple way, serotonin is the chemical that makes us feel happy and well. This is the chemical that we want to produce when we go running and the chemical we want to produce when we're in love, right? 90% of the body serotonin that is involved in mood management is actually produced in the gut. It's in your gut. It's not in your brain. It's not in your heart. It's in your gut. And we're going to talk about how a clean gut is super, super important with emotional wellness, okay? So, these are the three brains. Any questions about this? Did we get, we get there? All right. Now, we're gonna take what we just learned about emotion, okay? And we're gonna put it into, we're gonna actually put it into uh, a daily, so as an interaction, an actual, yeah. an actual daily interaction. But first, this kind of just represents, here's your brain, here's your heart, and here's your gut. And as they communicate with each other, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, she's a neuropsychologist, and she said the three brains communicate with each other. They feed back to and therefore influence the mind. <coughs> when this happens and they're processing well, and when we're able to process and, and to feel emotion and let emotion go when it no longer serves us, right? That's when we call it we feel connected, we feel well, right? Okay, so let's put that into a daily experience. What is this woman feeling right here? Have any of you felt this way before? I have, right? What's happening to her? So she has a crying baby. She's talking on the phone, and the dog is like, needing to be, he's barking, he's needing to be walked, right? So, sometimes I feel like this is how the day always starts, right? And then you kind of But, um, so she's experiencing some demands. Now, does she have to think about how am I going to deal with this? How am I going to handle this? Or does her do her three brains instinctively start processing? They will instinctively start processing every life experience, whether you think it through or not. Your body will react to your life experiences and your emotions, right? So let's take it to the next step. Here she has some demands placed on her. As she processes, it might look like this. Her head might think. I have to figure this out. I have so much going on. Her heart might think, I am feeling so overwhelmed. Her gut might think, I'm stuck. I have a brand new baby. I think his life is going to be like this. My, dog, my husband made me buy that dog. You know what I mean? Like, whatever it is. She, just, she might be processing this way. Okay? Now let's keep moving forward. What is her body's reaction to this? Now, as we process, our body has a reaction to those peptides. And what is our body's reaction? Many times, but where does it show up? Do you get headaches when you're overwhelmed with stuff? You absolutely can have headaches, right? Or but how about conflicted feelings? In your heart, you're like, oh, I want to take care of my baby, and she's a newborn, but I, I have a business to run. And how many of you have had those? <laughs> conflicted feelings as mothers. Or how many of you, when you process things, does it show up in your stomach? You just get a sick pit in your stomach. My daughter, she vomits. She gets, she, it, she feels it in her stomach. For me, I get migraines. I usually hold it in my head, right? But she gets sick. She gets an upset stomach. She'll start vomiting, and I almost always know it's she's processing her emotions, and she's not, she's not processing them well, right? So if this, when this starts to happen, this is where we feel disconnected. This is where we do not feel happy. This is where we are not well. Now let's just take it one step further, and this is what. So powerful, powerfully, powerfully awesome, powerfully sad. One step further is when we start processing, right? And we start reacting, our body starts reacting. Oftentimes <coughs> during that processing period, we will cement into our belief system core beliefs about us. Some of them. And the weed represents negative beliefs. 
They're like weeds that we feed and they just grow and fester. And some of them, they can be positive beliefs that will actually turn out and produce great fruit in our lives, right? So as we process, how many times will that mother say, I'm not good enough, I'm not a good mom, I don't balance well, right? I can never handle things. I yell at my kids. My, my house is never clean, right? And those beliefs that we start cementing over and over and over and over again in our mind, well, they show up in your life and they create their reality. They show up and they create their reality. Now I have a question for you. How many of you believe that that's true? The more and more we cement negative thoughts into our mind as we react and process, right, with just life, when life happens, how many of you believe that those negative thoughts when they're like weeds, will actually end up creating our reality. Raise your hand if you believe that. You know, what's interesting to me is, most people will say the negative they believe, but the exact opposite, the positive, they have a hard time believing or actually doing. If one is true, the other has to be true. If negative thoughts cemented into our minds will create a negative reality for us, positive thoughts, cemented into our minds will create a completely different reality, a completely different positive reality. If one is true, the other has to be true. Does this make sense? So, this woman is so powerful. She is so powerful. She literally can create her reality by the thoughts and the peptides that she chooses to move on a cellular basis. Okay, so did you get some? Does everyone have some? Makes me want to smell nice. So balance was called the grounding blend. One of the oils that's in balance is, a, is an oil called frankincense. And let me tell you why frankincense is so powerful. All oils have different chemistry and different compounds. They work differently in the body. The reason that I love frankincense, in fact, if I were trapped on an island and could only have one oil, I would always choose frankincense. And let me tell you why. Frankincense helps, or helps cells restore quickly or die quickly. It, they help cells function at their natural level. Does that make sense? So whether you're putting it on your skin and you're wanting your skin to be more firm, or whether you're using it on your brain stem and you're wanting to have more clarity, or whether you're using it in balance and you're wanting to feel more peace and more calm and more collected, right? So, um, now, why? Why does it work? Why does balance work, right? <coughs> let's talk, let's go into it. So, emotions and essential oils Emotions work chemically also, so they speak the same language. On a chemical level, they speak the same language. Now, I have a question for you. Can 
progress emotionally without essential oils? Absolutely. You've known people that have really progressed emotionally without using essential oils, right? So is, is it essential oils that are actually magic? No. Everyone's like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to say. I'm scared. <laughs> Sometimes we live in the past so much that something that happens and has caused a reaction with us physically, we bring it up over and over and over and over again. And we put our body through that same taxing process. And our cells were meant to process things and let things go when they no longer serve us, right? So I want you to just think about that right now, just letting that go right now, okay? So what we just did with balance and with wild orange is called kind of like emotional detox. Breathing in, thinking about something that happened, right? And deciding in your mind, it's okay. I'm starting over. It's a new day, it's a new moment, it's a new hour. I'm a new person, I can choose differently, right? It can be different. All right. So, do you know that one drop of essential oils a big number, has 40 million trillion molecules in it, in one drop. And these chemical compounds service every cell of the body in a matter of minutes. So what that means is a little bit goes a long way. And even though we might start in a certain area of our body that we feel most pressure, within a few minutes, this is transferred to every single part of your body. And by the way, your emotions also get transferred to every single part of your body. Those peptides and those, those, um, those interactions get transferred to your entire body also. So, um, here's what it looks like. Let me tell you why this is happening. Let me tell you why balance works. It's very simple and it's very awesome. It's simply like this. Here we go. Here's an essential oil right here, okay? Right here you have a receptor site. All cells have receptor sites. Now, my daughter Marisa this morning called me and she woke up and she was really stressed because her battery wouldn't start on her car. So as we look at her battery in her car, what do you think the battery looks like? 
it's a mess. There's stuff all over it, it's corroded, and even when she has some of the jumps, the jumper cables, there's not a good connection. So she just barely left about 20 minutes ago to go get a new battery, because they, they need to have better connection. Right here is where your cell actually connects with all of the information your body is giving it. It's that connector site right there that makes all the magic happen in your body. And what essential oils actually do is they're not magic and they don't heal your body. Your body heals itself. We all know that, right? It's your body that does the healing. But essential oils actually clean off the receptor sites of your cells and let them, it literally is like it scrubs them down. The essential oil clean off the receptor sites and it makes the receptor sites of your cell able to connect and to receive and to process information faster and quicker. And the reason why this is good is because then they can let go of information, they can die faster, and they can also what? Restore quicker, right? That is the beauty of essential oils. That's what essential oils do. And because all essential oils, it's cool, right? And they've done so much research on this and they've shown receptor sites with and without essential oils and how quickly cells process with essential oils there. It totally makes sense emotionally too. So essential oils support cell receptor sites. They promote healthy cell function and they maintain cells natural state. Any questions on that? How do we know there's 4 million trillion molecules? I have no idea. <laughs> That's a lot, too, huh? That's a lot. I'm going to make her All right, moving on. So as we talk about essential oils and emotions or healing, we have to talk about the different kinds of essential oils. And what I want you to remember is simply this. The grade of oil you use will determine its chemistry, its potency, and its efficacy. So if you just walk in Walmart and get the cheapest oil, you are not going to find the chemistry, the potency, and the efficacy that you're looking for to make those connections happen, right? So really quickly here, we have a peppermint. This is a magnified picture of a peppermint leaf. And here's some facts on the peppermint leaf. This is the oil of the leaf, right? And peppermint is a really powerful oil. And one is that peppermint is my favorite oil. To, to actually because she's typing will you help us it's my favorite oil to let people show how efficacious and how pure our oils are now there's four different kinds of oils there's what we call synthetic oils those are what like cleaners lemon cleaner they're maybe perfume you already have some Take your finger, dip it in the oil, and then take that finger and put it on the roof of your mouth. Mm. Now rub that hand, rub your hands together. Oh, With the again. video. I'll try it. Rub it on the back of your neck. Woo! Oh, well. That's a pure oil. <laughs> and that, there's four different kinds. Synthetic is the lowest grade. That's or, good. <laughs> the second grade is what we call food grade. Those are some of the essential oils we use in food, like thyme and basil and oregano. We use a lot of them. The third grade is called therapeutic grade. It helps and heals our bodies. And the fourth grade is what I like to call medicinal grade, or CPTG, Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. And once again, the grade of oil you use will determine its potency and its chemistry. So, oils are not just good for just emotions. They're good for many different things. They're good for many parts of our body and many and many things that we want to help restore and ailments that we're working on. One of the reasons why I love peppermint is it's great for mental support. How many of you have gotten tired and used peppermint just to wake you up and get you focused, right? I use it all the time. And have you, have you ever felt that mental fog? It's pleasant, maybe it's when you get older. But the last, I'm not kidding, the last four or five years, I'm like, I swear I can't think as clearly. And I can't find words as clearly. Peppermint is really great for concentration and just, you know, like, clearing up that mental fog. Peppermint's also great on fevers. It's really great on, head, great on head tension. So we're gonna talk about the three ways that we use the oils for, for, um, for our emotions. And the first is aromatic. Now, all of our emotions are seated in what we call the limbic system of our brain. All of our, this is, this is the seat 
of our emotions in the brain. That limbic system is directly connected to this. What is this? What's my letter? Olfactory nerve. Yeah, this nerve right here is called the olfactory nerve. And as we breathe in those oils, within seconds, it sends messages to the limbic system. Those peptides are immediately working, and those receptor sites are receiving that information quickly and sending it to the rest of the body really, really quickly. So the fastest way when we're talking about managing mood to use essential oils is how? Aromatically. That's the fastest way because it's hitting the limbic system of our brain, right? So that's the first way that we use the oils when it comes to emotions. The second way is our, our essential oils are dynamic. That means that they don't just support our body physically, they also support it emotionally, right? Oops, sorry. And we can use them topically. Now, some of you, this is going to be a stretch. And I invite you to stay with me because I promise you that if anybody felt like emotions and essential oils were a stretch at the beginning, it was me. Until I worked on it more, studied it more, I used it with my family more, and I had incredible results. Now, our emotions, their emotions differently in different places of their body. For my daughter, my nine-year-old, who went to the Czech Republic, didn't know any Czech, and we threw her into Czech school day one. She knew nothing. So for months, all she could do was just try and understand. I remember one day I said, what did you, what did you understand today? She goes, I understood one word, Wednesday. I'm like, good job. We got Wednesday, right? <laughs> do you know where she held her emotions and the way that her body reacted? she vomited. After a couple months, she started vomiting every single night just because she didn't want to go to school the next day. And she held it right in her gut. It was, she got upset stomach. She started getting nervous when she couldn't understand the teacher and she just felt like, and literally it, it showed up physically for her. Does this make sense? Some of us, we hold our emotions in our heart and in our chest. How many of you hold your emotions there where like something really heavy happens and literally it's hard for you to breathe? or you start getting panic attacks, or you have anxiety, and you're like, okay, I just have to breathe, and I just, I have to just calm down. And some of you literally will say things like, I just feel like my heart hurts. I, I just, I have a pain in my chest. Does this make sense? For that, um, those emotions, and your, your, your body is reacting physically, and it reacts different places in your body, right? Some of you, like me, I hold my emotions absolutely in my head. I get migraines all the time. The more stressed I become, the more I put things on my plate, the more I don't process, I get a migraine and it will show up all the time in my head. So, how many of you hold more of your emotions in your head, like me? Yeah? How many of you is more in their chest and they're just, yeah? How many of you it's in your gut? So it's different for every single person, but when it comes to the topical application of essential oils, after you breathe them in, where would you start to apply them? What would be the first place that you start to apply? Wherever you hold that emotion. So if you're, if you're feeling it here, you would apply it here. If you feel it in your gut like my little girl, I would have her put the essential oils on her gut. If I'm always getting feeling it in my head and tension in my neck, I'd apply it there. Does this make sense? All right, moving on. Did that freak anybody out or are we, are we still okay? Love it. <laughs> so one of my favorite, I know this sounds funny, but emotional oil? It's passion. It's super great for helping clear emotions when you have tension, when you have headaches, when you're trying to process things. It's one of my favorite, favorite oils. It's passion. Okay, internal use of essential oils. Now, for some of you that this might seem a stretch, but it's not. Let's think about some ailments or some emotions. I'm going to give you a hint, stress, that will actually show up in physical ailments that Absolutely, the eternal, internal use of essential oils would be the most, the best one. What, which one? Worry. Worry, and how does that show up physically where you use it internally? How about ulcers? This is a great example of how your emotions can have literally a physical impact and how the internal use, whether, whether you're using it under the tongue or in water or in a gel cap, can support your overall health and your emotions, okay? So, one of my favorite oils to use internally is On Guard. 
So On Guard not only is great for, we know, we use it all the time. I think I've used On Guard in the last three or four days at least 20 times. <laughs> I've been flying. So whenever I feel like I'm maybe in a little bit more vulnerable setting, like in big groups or I'm flying or I'm around a lot of people that might have, you know, things to spread, I, I'm always using On Guard internally, right? Or seasonal spread. To spread. To spread. <laughs> Let's, I want you to, I want you to look, oh my goodness, you guys, this whole time, are you serious? I didn't give you any of your handouts. on a cellular level much faster, it's going to be able to produce better and quicker serotonin, which produces a much faster response for you to process your emotions and let them go. And I'm okay. Does that make sense? I felt it. I processed it. I'm okay. Let's move on. Now, let's talk specifically about a gut cleanse. Because if you're all backed up and you're taking life on vitality, how much of that life on vitality is going to get absorbed when your gut is not absorbing correctly in the first place? Not, not, not as much as it should be. So here we go. The, the cleanse and restore gut health is basically this. We're going to start with the exorcist. And now what I want you to remember is we're doing this cleanse for what? Improved mood. <coughs> For improved moves. So we're going to start with GX Assist. Imagine you have a home and, and in your front yard you have grass. It's beautiful grass. And imagine you have weeds that start growing all over in that grass. What is the first thing you have to do with that grass? You have to kill the weeds. You have to kill the weeds first. You can't just keep watering and watering. What will happen to the weeds? The weeds will grow. And in time, the weeds totally overcome. Right? So we have to first kill the weeds. This is what GX Assist does. Just like in your gut, when you have bad bacteria that are growing in your gut, you first have to kill the bad bacteria. GX Assist does this. It's a 10-day regime. Then, after you kill the weeds, and especially if there's lots of patches of weeds in your yard, what do you then have to do after? You have to plant new grass. You have to seed it. 
And this is what PB assist is. It's probiotics that then go into your gut and seed your gut with very, very healthy. Hey, do me a favor. Don't look ahead because you're going to ruin all my jokes. <laughs> but create a very healthy gut and very healthy lawn, right? Now, Terrazyme. Do you guys understand why we use Terrazyme? Do you know about Terrazyme? It's the How best. How do you feel like you understand Terrazyme? <laughs> A lot of, some of you do. It's very easily explained this way. You take an apple, you take the apple and you put it into a field. And after a month, if you let that apple sit there, what will happen to the apple? It'll decay. Because God made apples perfectly. He put the exact amount of enzymes into that apple to decompose itself. And he does that with all food. So when, if we were only eating whole food, we wouldn't need to use terrifying. I was down in Arizona and I didn't understand. It was right after Terrazyme came out and we were giving Rob Young this salad, right? We were at lunch with him at somebody's house. We were giving him the salad and we said, do you want some Terrazyme? He goes, no, I don't need it. And we're like, he gives his own product. <laughs> He's like, you don't need Terrazyme with like whole food. It has its own natural enzymes. But if you take that apple and cook it or process it, it kills the natural enzymes in that apple. So almost all the food that we eat is cooked, even vegetables. Those natural enzymes are killed. So when we go to digest it, what ha the body has to come up with its own natural enzymes and it overtaxes our system, our digestive system. Does this make sense? Year after year, all that processed food. So what you can do is you can actually take Terrazyme while you're eating and it helps process and put those natural enzymes back into your gut so your body doesn't have to create its own enzymes in that. Does this make sense? So if you're eating just salad today, only salad, you need to use terrazyme. But if you had one of those really, really good tortillas, you need to use terrazyme. All right, moving on. Lemon. Lemon not only cleans our bathrooms and our walls and our kitchens, but it also cleans the inside of our bodies. And so a super easy way to cleanse ourselves is just put lemon in our water bottle and to drink lemon with our water every single day. And then lastly, Zendocrine. How many of you have done this endocrine cleanse, honestly. Raise your hand if you've done it. Very few. But let me tell you what's going on with endocrine. Just like a car, a car has filters in the car. If you never replace the filters of a car, what would happen to your car? After a while, it would stop. It would stop working correctly and then it would actually stop. We have filtering organs in our bodies. Those organs do not filter perfectly and some residue is left behind. They don't have a perfect filtering system. So cleansing those filtering organs is really important. What are our filter, filtering organs? What are they? Liver, 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 our kidney, yeah. our skin, right? Yeah. Skin is one of the biggest filtering organs that we have. And Zendocrine, Zendocrine cleanse is basically a cleanse that actually specifically goes to our filtering organs and cleanses our filtering organs. This is a gut cleanse. How many of you have done this complete gut and you know what? You feel so much better after you've, yeah, after you've done it, if you've done it for the 10 days and, and the PD assist. So those of you that haven't, get ready to actually have a better mood. When you cleanse your gut, you give your body the ability to create more serotonin. A big cleanse. All right, moving forward. Now, we're going to, we're going to do, um, we talked about emotions, and we talked about how oils support the body and their ability to process emotions. Now, I need a volunteer. Who would like to volunteer? Who would like to come up and volunteer for me? Anybody? Yeah, come on up. Okay. This is the um, aromatherapy wheel, doTERRA's aromatherapy wheel. Okay. Now, I want you to look at this. There's all these emotions around this wheel. You guys have it right there. And that they're not all the emotions, but there's a lot of different emotions. I want you to choose an emotion that you've been dealing with the most, just one, over the last several days. Or maybe the week. Worry. Okay. So let's take worry. The two oils that are on both sides of worry are what? In the floral category. 
lately last couple days let's see I'd say anxious just about this whole trip okay <laughs> trying to make so sure. and where's anxious okay it's in between motivate and peace come on over here how do you smell this and see what really jumps out and seems to so here's motivate
into my mind. And pulling out negative thought patterns, give yourself a point. Number two, I choose to believe good about myself and others. Instead of constantly battering yourself down. And so I'm a bad mother, or I'm fat, or I'm not organized, or I'm bad at doTERRA. But if you choose, if you choose to believe good about yourself and others, give yourself a point. Number three, I nourish my brain with good fats and minerals. Number four, let's go to the healthy heart. I trust my intuition and my higher power. You're trusting your heart, just what feels right, and you go with that, you trust it, right? Okay, number five, I freely give and receive love. Not just give, but I receive it also. I freely give and receive love. Number six, I often feel peaceful inside. I rest well. I often feel peaceful inside. I rest well. Number six. Number seven. I digest. It's not on this. Okay, she's a little bit better than this. There's no I digest and process food well. I digest and process food well. Eight. I nourish my digestive system with good nutrition and energy. And number nine, my body is healthy and feels good. My body is healthy and feels good. So if you look at that, now this is just for yourself. You don't have to tell anybody else. But if you're nine, I would venture to bet you are probably really emotionally healthy. You process things well. You get over things. You don't stuff your feelings. You actually feel emotion and move on, right? If you're three or four or anything lower than that, you're probably emotionally really up and down and struggling a lot of times with your emotions. And now you know kind of where some of those areas that you can work on, okay, for healthy mood and lifestyle. Now, I'm going to go through this and I'm going to give you some examples from my life and my children's life of there are, there are things each one of us need to weed out of our lives. And I, I invite you to actually write it down if you can think of those things that you need to weed out, like for instance, bad thoughts are constantly going through your mind, whatever that is. I'm not good at go tear that. Or, <laughs> some of you are. Or, I'm a bad mother. Or, I'm fat. Or, I have terrible relationships. Or, I don't get along with people. Or, I'm not outgoing. Or, maybe it's substances. Maybe it's substance abuse. Maybe it's sugar. Maybe it's whatever it is, right? That's real, that you need to actually weed out. And there are things that we need to plant. New beliefs, new relationships. Maybe we need to plant new habits, like for supplementation or using water or exercise, whatever that is, right? As I was going over this, this um, so last night I woke up, like I told you, right, at 12.30 and I stayed awake, did I tell you? I woke up at 12.30 a.m. and I stayed awake until 6.30 a.m. because I'm jet lagged. And I was like, I don't know what to do with this. So I was like, I went running at four in the morning, and I was ta I was thinking about this, and I thought to myself, why don't I get up early when nobody's awake and do this every morning? Because I mean, not four, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> so this morning I actually decided what I want to plant is I want a new morning schedule. That's a new a new seed that I want to plant, and I'm going to redo my morning schedule, and I think it's going to make a big difference in my life, right? And then how will you nourish that seed? What are the habits? What are the practices? What are the patterns that you're going to do? What are the things that you're going to say to yourself, right? How are you going to nourish this? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to tell you a story about my kids, Eliza and McKay, when they were going to school this year in the Czech Republic. Now, Eliza and McKay were very popular kids here in Utah. Eliza was the star of her soccer team. She was the littlest one and she was the best. She's a forward. And she scored three-fourths of all the goals the entire season. And she loved her life. And McKay has so many friends we just call, we don't even call them friends. It's just a pack. It's a herd of kids. <laughs> it just goes from one house to another. We never know where the herd is. We just check in with moms every once in a while and just asking where they are. He loves his friends. Well, we took them out of that environment, and we took them to the Czech Republic, where they didn't understand anyone. They had no friends that would talk to them. And no one on Eliza's new soccer team would talk to her because they couldn't talk to her. So they didn't know if they were even understanding her. So here, I, here my kids are at the beginning of the school year, and they're struggling. And they go to school, and they're not understanding anything, and they come home for school, and they
and they start developing some physical reaction to their emotions. Eliza's was throwing up. Now, my older kids went through the same experience and they all have you know, this experience with learning a language, but I'd never seen a child throw up like this. I'd never had a child every single night vomit because they were so nervous to go to school the next day. And in fact, it got so bad because she was doing it every night that I told Patrick we might have to go home. Like, I, I, this, I, I don't want this to like negatively affect her for the rest of her life. So um, then Eliza would come to me. Now you have to know my Eliza, she's really bright. She's a really bright kid. She's always been the top of her class. She's the girl that gets her math done before everyone's even like half done. And she's like, she comes home, she's like, I have no homework. I did it while everyone else was continuing, you know. So she's, just, she's been used to that. And here she goes to a new school. And I remember one day she came home and she said, Mom, I'm not in the middle of my class. I'm the absolute dumbest person in my class. There's nobody in my class that's dumber than me. And she started, what, did she, what was she starting to do? She was starting to fill this little head with these beads. And it went like this, I'm dumb, I'm dumb, I'm not good enough, I can't speak this language, this is too hard, I have to go home, I can't handle it. And then it started showing up physically in her and she started to vomit. Every night she would vomit and vomit and so scared to go to class. So Patrick and I had to figure out a way to weeding out right, this process and putting new things in. And she actually started using oils all on her own. She, we always use oils in our family, but she hadn't used oils herself emotionally before. So she started using oils right by her bed every night and taking the oils to school. And we started saying to her, Eliza, actually, do you know that you're the smartest person in that class? Your brain is working harder and faster than any other person in that room. You're doing more work in a day than they're doing in the entire day. You're smart, you're bilingual. It's different than being dumb. You're bilingual and it's amazing. And we started feeding this and feeding this. Well, Eliza decided that her new habit is she, one day she came home and she was using the oils and it was getting better. She stopped throwing up, right? And she said, mom, I noticed that when the teacher's talking to me and I don't understand her, I totally stress out. Like I start like really stressing out. And she goes, when I suck on something, it calms me down. I'm like, that kind of makes sense. I mean, babies suck on pacifiers, right? When they're really <laughs> I'm like, okay. And she's like, can you find me a water bottle that has that sucking? You know, some of them you can like suck. She's like, can you find me a water bottle that has a suck thing? And when the teacher comes up to me and I don't understand, I'm just gonna grab my juice and go. Like, oh. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. So so she 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 had this. She had this water bottle that she'd suck every day. And she, when she started getting stressed, she started sucking on it, right? And she was using her oils, and it really helped her. It really helped her. And now, incredibly enough, Eliza is actually going to be our best Czech speaker. She has a talent for it. After about 11 months, she's almost fluent in the language. She's really talented in the language, but that stress could have held her back so much into her thinking that what? That she's dumb, right? Which she's not, which is not true. Now, McKay, showed up much differently. McKay, instead of getting, throwing up, McKay shut down. He got depressed. McKay gave up. And I remember the day that me and McKay were walking to, to school, because we live only about two minutes away, and he sat down on the edge of the school, right on the, not the edge of school, on the edge of the sidewalk, right by the school. And he just looked at me and he says, he's nice. Like he has control over this, but this is what he said. I'm not going anymore. I'm done. I'm not doing Czech schools anymore. I'm going back home. <laughs> now there, I could have handled this very bad, right? Like this could have been an emotional trigger for a really long time. If I'd have been like, oh yes you are, and dragged him into school, every single time going to school, he would have been what? Mom's forcing me, I hate mom, I don't wanna be here, I hate school, and it would be this emotional, you know, constant trigger, and I didn't know what to do. He's just sitting there, this nine-year-old little boy, and he just refuses, I will not go to school anymore, and I'm like, I had no idea, so I just started to pray. I'm like, what did I do? So it, it came to me, and I looked at him and I said, what's your last name? And he said, Shevedi. And I said, let me tell you a story about Shevedi. Your grandparents' last name was Shevedi. And they lived in the Czech Republic. And when communism came here, they took their kids and they left everything. They left their homes, they left their families, and they moved to a new, continent, a new country that they didn't speak the language. 
course, his little mind goes, yeah, but it's way easier to learn the language when you're older. And I go, actually, my friend, it's a lot easier to learn the language when you're younger. But your grandparents learned the language and your grandmother learned it so well that she graduated from college in English. And your, and your dad, his last name is Chevy. He went to a French school when he was 10 years old, not knowing one word of French. And by the end of that school, he was number one in the school. He was the top of his class. And your older brothers and sisters, their last name is Shedevy. And they came here just like you, in your same age. And they went through the exact same experience that you're going through. And they learned this language. And now they can speak to their aunts and uncles and their cousins. And I said, and I, I came here when I was 21. And I learned this language. And I looked at him and I said, OK, Shedevy's going to do hard things. And when you learn to do hard things at night, You'll be a better father, you'll be a better husband, and you'll be a better contributor to society. And he stood up and he said, I'm going to school, Mom. I'm a <laughs> <shedding." laughs> But that isn't where we stop, right? We kept feeding his mind with, instead of this is hard, this is hard, what did we feed it with? We can do hard things. Shedavis can do hard things. Hard things build our character. This is an opportunity for you. And about a month ago, we had some people visiting from um, America, and they were talking to Eliza McKay, and I overheard the conversation. I wasn't in the conversation. And they asked them, so how do you like school? How do you like tech school? Now, of course, they don't love it. Like they, I mean, they still they miss their friends. And without me saying anything, even me being around, Eliza McKay said, we can do hard things. So I love this quote. You fill a bucket drop by drop. You clear your mind thought by thought. You heal yourself moment by moment. And we do this with all of the tools that we've been given today. With the knowledge of essential oils, with the research that has been done, how we can support our biochemistry, with filling our minds with great, with great things, and by practicing things that we know will lead us to make our realities special, extraordinary. And I'm super grateful that doTERRA is concentrating on emotions because more than any other ailment, people deal with emotions way more. Bigger percentage of society deals way more with emotions than a specific ailment, right? Okay, so that's your basic emotions class. And then after that, you can go, you can see in your little handout, you can go to the kit. And there, there's, you know, there's an emotions kit. So, so you can actually emotions. teach just the basic emotions here. class. This emotions. is a great class to teach for young mothers, by the way, that are dealing with young children. Yeah. All right? So, any questions? Any thoughts, comments? What do you, how do you feel? Is this simple enough? Especially when you have this, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have any thoughts or comments? Yes, 